Hi, welcome Holly Active. Um, thanks for coming in. I'm really excited for bringing you in today because you are one of our veteran trainers of the gym space. Oh, is that a good term, veteran? That makes it, it sound is, really it, old, uh, doesn't no, it? No, experience we're going to go with, go with experience. <laughs> there you go. Um, but this, I suppose to paint a bit of picture of what we're going to do today, a little bit of this is your life, a little bit about how you've got into the industry. Yeah. And hopefully some experience is really valuable to other people watching the trainers at home on their phones and all the details that we'd love to know about how you grew your business and how maybe you've taken different avenues, some success stories, some challenges faced. Um, so I suppose we'll go back to the earlier phase. I'm sure it wasn't that long ago, I'm sure. Um, how did you get into the industry and what were sort of your driving factors? Were you always looking into health and fitness? I know a little bit about the story, but I'd love to hear a bit more about that. Okay, so I got um, uh, into personal training about 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I was an actress previous to that, coming to kind of an end of a pretty decent career. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted something to put alongside it. Mm -hmm. I'd always been passionate about health and fitness, um, always keeping active from mm -hmm. doing kickboxing from the age of 18, dance, gymnastics. I mean, I was just always, you know, always climbing trees and yeah, just, yeah. you know, being out in nature and being active. Um, very kind of into my nutrition um, and so it just seemed like a really natural thing yeah um, and then yeah I just thought oh it's not gonna be a career it's just no. gonna work alongside my acting okay so yeah I suppose in in a nutshell for you it was something that you looked into and found found that you had a, a passion for I suppose how was that transition from what you were doing into PD did you find there was a lot of information about how to become a trainer was there a lot avenues available that you could find easily to become a PT? I think like anything, I mean, I mean, 12 years ago, the industry was just growing. Was growing. Yeah. It's not, was it, it, you know, like it is now, yeah, but sure. it was still kind of, you know, there was a lot of information out there, but then mm. when there's a lot of information, it can always get really confusing. Yeah, sure. So there was loads of courses available. Okay. Um, look, and I was a bit like, which What's one's credible, yeah. which yeah. one's going to be better for me. Yeah. And it was it was difficult, actually, mm -hmm. deciding which one to go for. Um, mm. And is one going to be better than another? And sure. in the end, I just kind of found four that kind of fitted in with my timetable, sure. were close to where I lived, and actually yeah. just worked with my schedule. That's great. And was it sort of something you looked, you set a goal that you wanted to be a certain credential? Did you do, for example, like CPDs, you know, continuing professional development, did you do like exercise to music did you do some additional stuff or did you go level two level three and then you started your pt i did i did level two level three yeah, nice. started pt cool. and then did add-ons so when um i actually got my qualification mm -hmm. i didn't I, I felt like i didn't really know anything sure, i felt yeah. like it was the beginning of my learning uh -huh. um so for me then going on from there mm -hmm. was doing you know extra qualifications sure. um and and a lot of reading i suppose it gave you i suppose i mean a lot of people talk about self-learning and that's a great value you said yeah. about reading additional stuff. Um, I suppose it give you confidence as well because I know, when, you know a lot of people when, when I started as well when you come just into the industry I think that extra bit of information having, it gives you a bit of confidence when you have your first few clients I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, the more you know, you know, the more comfortable you feel. Sure. Um, and I just, yeah, so it, for me, when I first qualified, that was this, the beginning That's, of my learning. Yeah, some additional value there. Uh, and so what was the, uh, what was your logic in terms of where you were going to navigate your career at that point? I suppose in terms of PT down into a, I mean, freelance, the employed route, what, what kind of felt natural and how did that go for you, I suppose, six months from when you qualified? Well, my whole career prior to that, being mm -hmm. an actress, was yeah. self-employed. Yeah. So I'd never been employed and had a boss as such. Yeah. So for me, naturally, being self-employed and being able to manage my own business just mm -hmm. felt very right for me. Nice. Um, so I didn't really want to go into a gym and have a boss. Sure. Um, I wanted to work my own timetable. Mm -hmm. um, scary yeah, because yeah, you really sure. you know yeah. you don't know where you're going to find your clients and how sure. you're going to retain your clients yeah, yeah. and all of those things okay. but um within three months of me starting mm -hmm. um i firstly loved it Great. was extremely passionate about it yeah, yeah. and was willing to put everything i had sure. into it i suppose that, that builds sometimes i know a lot of people start out in this very it's a challenging period when you first start as a pt so some people I think they can be on the fence and not not know no no. I suppose like takeoff speed, being able to get enough clients is quite a challenging point in, a, in as a trainer. Um, what was the bits that you found easy to acquire trainers on? Did you tend to do go around people that you knew direct? Did you set up a very you know strong business and marketing sales navigation? You know, no, was it? it was all um, word of mouth okay, through great, friends. Yeah. 
Perfect. free i would be yeah, training yeah. people for free of, the best form oh, of yeah. marketing right there so. i mean that was literally you know i think that that not only for yourself because you, you know you do feel you know, a little bit like you've got people's lives in your hands yeah. and you want to be good at what you do so sure. initially i didn't want to i didn't feel comfortable charging so yeah. i wanted to um until i really felt comfortable with what mm -hmm. i was doing everything mm -hmm. was for free and then it was word of mouth sure. for me it really That's was great. the um that was the best marketing well, I, think, just, I think it's quite a nice thing that you, you touched on which is like doing a little bit of sort of so almost sacrificial work in terms of like putting in the work in order to build up to the point where you can maybe ask for money off people. I think putting in the, so we said the early stages graph, I think a lot of people tend to take on clients with a very heavy discount, or there's yeah. a lot of times where people go like, you know, I train a friend just to get experience. I think that's a very uh, valuable point there. Yeah. Um, and I suppose, how did that grow for you? Did you then start, obviously I know at Holly Active, obviously arrival, that's the social media bit. How was the bit between that brand uh, and obviously you as a trainer? Well, I suppose, I mean, so initially, you know, you did a few free clients and then word of mouth. Uh -huh. And then I actually did go to a gym. Cool, yeah. Where I paid an over, I paid rent, fixed which was month, a yeah, yeah fixed monthly okay. fee. Um, but I didn't have anyone telling me when yeah. and what to do. Um, yeah. So I had the freedom yeah, of doing yeah. my own thing. Um, and that's where I think where it kind of grew um, quickly because uh -huh. you had people watching you on the floor. Okay doing, yeah. you know, with your clients mm -hmm. working out. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of definitely, I had a quite an established nice. um, set up from, from being at the gym. And that was sort of 20, 30 hours a week, would you say? Yeah, I, you know, I was working. working more, I think I was, we talked before you were working. <laughs> you know, I the, working. What I call the graveyard shift in terms of long-term repetitive cycles, 35 yeah. pluses. Is, I was is working, yeah, between 35 and 40. And probably a fair rule, and this clients. would be where we both probably relate quite well uh, so w where would you, what point do you draw the line with the hours a lot, a lot of trainers that are probably watching this might actually be existing trainers yeah and probably at the point where they're like 30 hours a week like okay, if i do any more i kind of feel like i should and i should have to and i always felt like that quite a lot like i, I go as many hours as i can do yeah. you maybe would say you maybe lose some of your quality control would you say it's fair yeah i don't know i never kind of felt that i was losing quality i mean mm -hmm. i always would have time off i would okay, take so, weekends yeah. off that oh was, weekends off yeah. weekends off <laughs> don't look no this is yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. i would take weekends off um and that was really important to me so That's i had nice. downtime yeah. i had prep time mm -hmm. um i would only work two slash three evenings a week sure yeah um so i was kind of quite you know but then around that then i would then i would kind of work hard mm -hmm. and so there was long days yeah yeah i mean i've, I've seen your your you know working working at pd workspace in the hours you do i mean that's, you do long long shifts sometimes back to back um but i think yeah, a valuable point you say is like you know being able to give yourself room to kind of downtime because it's quite yeah. easy to get caught evenings mornings and that becomes your schedule and just grows and grows and grows so i think it sounds like you took it took quite a, you know a lot of so there's an emphasis on that early on to make those 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 limitations to what you were prepared to do yeah. in order to keep the balance of your life intact. Yeah, I mean, initially, when you're health. setting up your business, yeah. you do whatever it yeah. takes. Of course, yeah, yeah. That's it. Mm. Whatever it takes, I was going to do, you yeah, know, yeah. crazy hours. But then as you grow, yeah. you can make choices. That's and good. you can, you know, say, these are the times I have. Mm -hmm. And usually people, it works. You can, mm. you can make it work for everybody. Um, yeah. Lovely. And I suppose part of your, your sales and marketing as you grew to full time, what was then your stepping stone? Because I know you're at the gym, it's fixed monthly heads, you know, fixed overheads monthly. What were you looking for then at that point? Was there sort of freedom to, to move around different parts of London? But obviously you were isolated in that area. What was your steps going from there? Was it straight um, to PD workspace? I remember the time. No, so, so basically what happened was I was... You know, I had more and more clients saying, can I travel to their houses? But uh, I yeah. was actually quite stuck at the gym because... Okay, yeah. because all my clients would come to the gym. Uh -huh. If anybody wanted me to travel, mm -hmm. I would see that as kind of lost money. Lost money and time. And yeah. lost money and time. Sure, sure. And I didn't have the time yeah. to start traveling around London. Mm -hmm. um, but then I had this big overhead of, sure. of a gym. Okay. So I was kind of quite stuck yeah. in that situation. And then I moved to New York for a year. That's right, yeah. So I moved yeah. to New York for a year. My business kind of was here and, and sure. stopped. Yeah. Um, and when I came back after a year in New York, mm -hmm. it was kind of like rebuilding my business again. Sure. I had probably had about 50% of my clients. There's still good retention, right? Pretty good, after a year, after a year after I a know, year. right? Hello, Holly, where Thank you been, guys. please? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, but at that point I was like, I was I didn't really want to go back to that gym. Sure. Um, and I, found this place. Was that literally the first thing that happened to you? So I can't remember obviously going I back to I, was, I went back Googling. to that gym for maybe yeah. like okay. 
a month or two okay, yeah. and it just wasn't mm. it didn't fit anymore yeah. i'd moved on i'd that's i'd a... grown and i'd changed mm. and i wanted something different sure that's nice nothing wrong with change. Um, change of scenery sometimes is, is yeah is, is, i've been there for nice. seven years eight years it was i was good, yeah. ready for a change yeah, that's fair and then yeah i literally found this place from just like Doing a little search. I'm, I'm sure you have some followers that probably will be watching the video. You know, Holly Active and your, your brand that you've built since, you know, developing your, your, your business. Uh, was that something you took hold of more when you came back from New York? And that was the, the, or did you have it before? And, and how has that grown for you, I suppose? Because it's a very interesting part, part of social media, sales, marketing to touch on, particularly when people are very, you know, have, have a good presence online. So it's very interested to hear what you, what's your background in terms of like, how long did it take you to set up, for example, we start with? So, Holly Active, um, I mean, I had my Instagram account, but yeah. I was not yeah. active yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Didn't. And it, yeah, <laughs> it, it, um, it kind of really started when I got back from New York. Yeah, sure. Um, so that was probably three years ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I really made a conscious decision then that it was uh, an important thing. Mm -hmm for branding, sure. for promotion, for yeah. everyone's doing it, so yeah. why aren't I? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and that's when I really dedicated my, you know, some more and, time into it. And you put, you put out quite a few videos, you like the exercise variety, seems to get good engagement for you? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, it's it's changed along the way. Sure. I see that people really do like um, videos, like, yeah, content. Yeah. So that's what I try and do more. I try and be quite interactive with my yeah. followers and yeah. ask them what they want. Nice. Um, and I try and give them a little piece of what I give my clients. Sure. Um, yeah. I think the, the crossover sometimes is between, should we say, being more, I suppose, lifestyle as well as fitness. It seems to be a trend now, which is obviously including a little bit about yourself and your life, and it makes people relate to you. Is that something you think that's been successful for you? Yeah, it's, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, I mean, the thing is, is I think people see personal trainers and, you know, they're doing some crazy fitness stuff sure, and they yeah, look yeah. a certain way uh -huh. and they, you know, they don't eat this and they're strict with that. Yeah, and, yeah. and to everybody who's, it's not their professional, mm. it's not, it kind of seems a bit unattainable. Yeah. And I kind of, when I'm with my clients, I just don't, that's not realistic for me. Sure, of course, yeah. Um, for me, it's about longevity. It's mm -hmm. about, you know, exercising for a long period of time, mm -hmm. doing something you enjoy, doing That's something nice. that works for that client, mm -hmm. eating a well-balanced diet, but let's not restrict and let's not yeah. start micromanaging, you know, your, you know, your nutrients and things like that, because it can become so overwhelming. Sure. Um, so for me, yeah, the lifestyle side of it is key. I think, yeah, I think, um, I think it's nice. It also reflects to a degree, particularly because I, obviously I, I look at your stuff, it reflects a lot about your ethos around training. So yeah. I think it's quite probably a nice thing to touch on for, for you, if you're looking at putting yourself across in a social media format. You kind of, it's very hard you know, to fake it really, it kind of, because your, your values will come through and if your lifestyle reflects your opinions and your training style, you often get the sort of clients that most relate to you, which I think is probably a, a truth in, in nature. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't, I, there's no bullshit when I'm, when I'm yeah. you know, when yeah, I'm yeah. doing my Instagram it is, you know, I live and breathe fit, yeah. health fitness yeah. and I don't want people to feel like it's unattainable. Sure. Um, it's about balance. It's about mm -hmm. kind of, you know, um, sometimes you don't work out and sometimes you drink wine and eat pizza and, <laughs> and you know, but, yeah. but it is about maintaining that consistency sure. um, for a long period of time. Perfect. And would you say for, uh, I suppose for a lot of trainers, probably wouldn't, probably maybe something you agree with, would you say social media for you is more of a supportive network to your, to your brand and your, and your clients and, and sort of retention possibly? Uh, how often do you, for example, is a lot of lead generation through for you personally through social media? And where, where do you commonly get your leads now going forward? Which is probably a really interesting question. Okay, so the honest answer, sure. Instagram. It's the right one. Um, at the moment, <laughs> I have 13,000 followers, which you might think is pretty decent. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it has any impact. Direct sales, Direct we say. Direct sales yeah. okay, sure. on my personal training. It's very good point to make, yeah. yeah. Um, I spend probably two full days a week mm -hmm working on Instagram, okay. creating content, mm -hmm. videos, photos, writing. It's a lot of time. Sure. Yeah. And so it is more of um, having just another foundation sure. of, you know, I've written two books. Yeah, yeah. So having, you know, books and um, a good following on Instagram mm -hmm. is more about the right sort of brand it's collaboration it's, I guess, of, yeah, it's, branding. it's more about yeah. branding yeah. than yeah. it actually is about sure. it bringing it's, a, it's not a market 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 marketing tool yeah yeah of course yeah yeah um 
at all. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. the way I, I um, through get clients is word of mouth. Sure. It's all word of mouth. Sure. Um, that's nice. It's, re it's really good points because I think uh, a lot of trainers looking at Instagram, Facebook can can get an sort of idolized perspective that it's just their their route to generation. And I, I would say uh, the, yeah. the trainers I speak to, even with very successful followings, there's that challenge between it's supportive, but it can't be your only route for no. general optimizing sales. No. I mean, um, the dream is you think, oh my God, I'm going to get sponsorship and I'm going to get paid sure. this and I'm yeah, going to yeah, get yeah. hundreds yeah. of clients. It, it, it isn't. Sure. I mean, for some people, maybe. But yeah. me personally, mm -hmm. that's not been the case. Um, and, um, you know, obviously having as many avenues, whether you've got a great website, yeah. whether you've got, you know, a good Instagram profile, mm -hmm. all these things help. They support, yeah. They support it yeah. and they're great. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't, I think it's about kind of being able to tap into a few sources mm -hmm. rather than it just being focused on one. That's great. That's great. Um, I suppose it leads nicely into, what would you say for a lot of trainers starting out now, so you're early on in your career and you are trying to get if space to take off speed in terms of your client numbers and trying to build your business. What would you say that tips that maybe you've, you've, you've found early on, any some of the challenges you've met and the things that you've, you've found to be useful tools that you might say, these are like some great tips. It's quite a hard one to yeah. define tips. I so, mean, it just depends on where you're based mm -hmm. and how many people you have, you know, being able to connect with as many people as possible. Sure. Okay. So, I mean, you know, the idea is that people to see you training, get a piece of you, get mm -hmm. to know you, so mm -hmm. they want you as sure. a trainer. Yeah. Um, and either if you're not in a gym already where they can yeah. see that, whether you're doing like a boot camp or a free kind of class sure. where people can then can kind of connect, yeah. you're offering whether it's, you know, nutrition advice, yeah, or you're yeah. doing a little seminar, so mm -hmm. maybe then you can have conversations with people. Yeah. Um, so you're actually, Putting you know, they have it. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're face to face. Yeah. I did leafleting. I yeah, did yeah. all of that when I started yeah. out. Uh, yeah. Nothing. Yeah, no, I they, mean, yeah. People don't look at a piece of paper. They sure. want to, they talk to you as a person. Engage, yeah. They want you. Yeah. They don't want a piece of paper. And even like, you know, through your website, mm -hmm. that can be difficult to put yourself across. Sure. So that's why even Instagram, if you're doing videos and there's a, a little bit of you, yeah, then, so, yeah, then people that's... Relate. People see you, you feel, feel you more approachable yeah. as that is a business. Yeah. Um, perfect. Um, I suppose what's, what's, what's going forward for you, you know, what's going forward over the future? What's your plans? You got any more books coming out? Do we, do we have, you know, sort of a hoddy active 2.0 plan coming along in the future? Um, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, I'm getting married in three weeks. Congratulations. Thank you to um, my lovely fiance who lives in Sweden. Okay. We're doing back and forth from Sweden. So mm -hmm. when I get married, who knows? I'm going to be probably splitting a bit of time. Sweden and London. Sure. I mean, I love my job so much. I'm not going anywhere at the moment. Yeah. I'm going to be here. Yeah. Um, who knows what will happen? Yeah. Um, I'm kind of not planning too much but um but no books at the Exc moment exci exciting time yeah. though because all, all things new uh and i suppose we already talked about it um if trainers would like to follow you check out where you're um you know what you're doing and what you're up to what's your instagram feeds and maybe some uh, if you've got a website as well holly active holly active holly active all the way simple simple that is that sums me up yeah um, don't stop moving so yeah holly active on instagram holly active website.com so amazing yeah. and thank you so much for coming in it's been very insightful Good. um hopefully all the trainers out there can see a bit of inspiration from what you've been doing i think you've got a, a great presence online although there's there's always challenges in sales and marketing i think what people would definitely you know there's some great value from what you said today uh and hopefully i'll see you obviously here at the studio of course because it's my favorite place <laughs> to be yeah um and perfect lovely